type of quality where you know it's affordable to live there, but it has low impact. Um, sustainability is also a prop. I brought a few prompts. The sustainability, sustainability is a flourishing enterprise, and the problem design is the problem. So. Our systems have been designed in an industrial age to, um, to um, business cycles to end. The idea of cradle to grave has created a overarching um, problem of waste that has become a burden for our environment. The idea of cradle to grave is now being transformed to cradle to cradle. So we can, because of the sustainability focus, we can design our systems to regenerate themselves. Does anybody know what uh, biomimicry is? Anybody know what biomimicry is? Yes. It's basically using the model of nature to design systems that, as you say, regenerate, heal, sustain themselves. Absolutely. So, does anybody know what's special about the University, the University of Akron in that area? Daily? <laughs> um, are they the only university in the country or the world that has a Bio, or a doctorate biomimicry program? They're the only, the University of Akron is the only university in the world with a biomimicry PhD. Hmm. That is a game changer. That is a partnership also between <coughs> science, because it's in the polymer department at the University of Akron, and the Cleveland Institute of Art. So that is a blending of the, of the discipline. And it will affect our systems at their core. And just in, in one simple idea, the industrial age was built on chemicals and toxic materials that have gone into the earth. Or come out of the earth, we've had to mine them, use them, and then they go back in a different form and they are waste. Biomimicry focuses on nature and the, and the materials of nature and using them in ways that um, will bring us back to less impact when they go back into the earth. So there are companies who make carpet that um, interface. Does anybody know what interface carpet is? I, I just know we used it at the Ronald McDonald House on the recent renovation recommended to our architects and they donated their product to Yes, your architect who I'm sure is uh, lead uh, registered certified as your building lead registered. Yeah. They, they they do have their elements in that we are not a lead building. However, yeah. they do um, on a redesign are trying to implement those where they can in a cost effective way for us. Right. So interface carpet will they innovated the square um, and they. Determined this uh, gentleman has passed away, but he was one of the, he's recognized as one of the top 20 people who changed the world in the area of sustainability. But he was looking at a business that, you know, had mass amounts of waste, not in the process of making carpet, but in the whole business world of carpet. And, you know, you take tear down the building and you put it in the trash, right? And it's carpet. So they have, over the years, transformed how you make carpet. And they took uh, carpets of broad, broad looms and that type of thing and put it in the squares. They made the material in, out of uh, a different material so that when it decomposes, it goes back to the earth. Or they can take it and remake another carpet out of it. They made these squares and had to figure out a way to put them on the in your building. And so as opposed to using toxic glues, they came up with a very simple way by looking at biomimicry and how nature adheres gecko feet 
they came up with a system to put um, um, yeah, little dots on the floor so the, uh, the weight of the carpet is transferred in through these uh, little dots that keep it from sliding. And there is no chemical used in the process. And they also came up with when you're done with the material, it goes back to them. And they are responsible for doing something with it. So you kept it out of the uh, landfill, they reused the material, and it's a win-win for everybody. So that is an environmental, economic, and benefit to the community and people. Is that the brand of carpet? It's called, yeah, Interface is the brand, yeah. And I will say, we use our floors hard, and they have held up, I mean, in an exceptional way. So it's a good product for use, too, not just on that side. It's proven that it's worth it. Yes. So you can go online. It's, it's really fun and look up uh, biomimicry.org and there's a website called Ask Nature. So ask nature any question uh, and it will pop up lists of solutions that um, various um, entities in nature, uh, how they deal with it. So uh, Kaylee uh, has a business in um, honey, in, or no, I'm sorry, in uh, bees and bees wax. And we had a uh, fun experience not too long ago where uh, uh, we did a pop-up um, retail business at the Better Blocks in North Hill. And it was our, um, as games, uh, we are a mentorship group, so we are doers, people who have started businesses, run businesses at all scales, of the, uh, all the way up to Gojo. Uh, uh, has participated in our um, evenings. But anyhow, so we want people to come with their ideas and we will help them be um, envisioned and, and happen. So this um, um, container business, is, we use shipping containers to recognize that those are actually a waste stream but they can be transformed into other things. They can be transformed into small houses. They can be transformed into retail space. Um, and we put um, our uh, Be Happy uh, business in there, which was um, Haley who uses material from, um, I don't want to speak for your business, but she. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. Um, so I use um, local beeswax from Brent Wesley's company, African Money Company, Good. as well as um, Avery and Ashley. So try to use the resources from in a, in a local aspect to reuse um, and create a socially conscious business. Um, so we teamed up together at Solar Products out of the shipping container. <laughs> uh, because a uh, focus of games is to focus on local economy and developing it, and food is a local economy that is growing at rapid even though you may not see it, you may think, oh, what is a community garden? That's not necessarily local food. What is local food is that we, it is a uh, food safety issue. And just to, at a broad scope, we recognize that California is experiencing extreme climate change issues that are going to affect your table. Most of the food that we eat in this country comes from California. Actually, only 5% of the food grown in California is actually eaten in California. The rest of it comes to all of us, and local food is a way for local communities to create resiliency in the supply chain for food. Um, and the Cleveland, Akron, Northeast Ohio area is a very vibrant local food community and one that is nationally recognize. That is a result of entrepreneurship and sustainability and people focused on that kind of development uh, 10 to 15 years ago. So, very uh, broad picture of a, uh, sustainability. It's, uh, there's, it affects all of us, whatever level of the economy you're involved in, but it also has 
tremendous opportunity for Akron and who we are and how we're going to go forward. So we invite you to please come to these meetings and learn and engage with us and do. So there was, uh, for the compost pile, there was more recycling and there was trash. 
So uh, it, was a, it was a really good exercise, and um, it was you know, timely, although we didn't know it at the time that in September we would be changing our focus and really talking about the current state of Summit County uh, food scrap uh, you know, composting feasibility. We didn't really know that at the time when we had started this months ago talking about what we are going to do this event, but it's all really timely now, and uh, at our next meeting on September 9th, we will be hearing from Yolanda Walker, who is the uh, head of Summit Reworks. She's going to kind of tell us what happened with Rosby. Uh, we are going to have the speakers, uh, the uh, co-founders of Rust Belt Riders up in Cleveland, who um, they are uh, a for-benefit business that um, they started to uh, collect. They actually did it on bicycles at first. Uh, they collected food scraps from local um, homes and restaurants and um, created compost for community gardens. They're growing and uh, expanding, and they're looking to come down to Akron and, and possibly start an, an operation down here, which is very exciting. Um, we're also going to hear from um, Jonathan Knapp, who uh, is the Akron, he's the, one of the people behind Akron Community Kitchen, which is a co-op kitchen. Um, in the local food realm, uh, it's very difficult for food producers that are small scale to um, you know, kind of do all of the things they need to do to get their product to market if they're processing things because you have to, you know, have commercial kitchens that are, um, you know, certified. So there is a group called Akron Community Kitchen that is, um, has been working to do a co-op community kitchen here. And that will, I think, go along nicely with um, Hattie Larvel's uh, food hub uh, that they've got uh, going on. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of give you an example of this is another thing that Gaines does is if somebody has an idea, we talk about it at a meeting, seven more people say, I'll do that with you, then you go and do it, and then, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that happen. There were seven to 8,000 people at that festival this weekend, and a lot of people um, commented on the fact that, that we had done that and that they really just kind of became aware of it. Another uh, facet to that is we um, got reverse osmosis water stations donated so people weren't buying as much bottled water and filling up their water bottles and, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, Gaines is a, a group that definitely does does that um, a lot where we just you know kind of all get together in a room and um, that's on the small scale of you know community engagement, but um, it is all part of a much bigger picture. So a um, couple more uh, meetings that we've got coming up in October. That will be on the 14th. Again, it's always on the second Wednesday at the Music Complex, either in Music Hall or upstairs at Uncorked, depending on where they are going for us. Um, we'll be talking about the Akron combined sewer overflow. Um, and uh, that will be an interesting kind of current state of what's happening with that. And in November, um, we're going to talk about permaculture because there is um, uh, a gentleman named Peter Bain who's doing an advanced permaculture design course in November, and the week of that course happens to fall on the week of the second Wednesday, so we're going to uh, talk about that then. So, uh, and then in December, we always have a celebration, and it's you know just a big potluck and uh, a time for all of us uh, to just get together and talk about our successes for that year and challenges and you know kind of what we hope for for the next year. So we do hope that you'll join us for a games meeting. Um, games can be found on Facebook at games greater Akron Innovation Network for Sustainability. You just type in games and you'll find us. Uh, we're on Twitter as uh, Games Akron. And that's it. Anything else? Any questions? Yeah, does anybody have any questions? How much have you been able to get the city government engaged in this process? <laughs> uh, here and there. <clears throat> Gaines uh, actually has been the uh, group that has uh, brought the conversation before uh, with uh, sustainability and the private sewer overflow. Um, we were uh, very aware that the integrated plan was the most significant component um, for the city of Akron with that, that would take um, 
a $1.4 billion cost and unsustainable um, cost on cities and turn it into um, a business generation green investment opportunity. Uh, so this goes back to the idea of um, biomimicry. So, which is part of our network is very much involved in biomimicry. We have entrepreneurs and business startups in biomimicry and University of Akron's program people. So, water, how does nature handle water? Should be the question asked, which is green infrastructure. We have extraordinarily smart systems around green infrastructure now that we did not have five to 10 years ago. Citibank announced two months ago, I think, a $100 billion investment in green infrastructure and smart infrastructure for, the, for our cities. That is how our cities will be transformed through infrastructure. Akron was able to, well, we're praying, literally praying that Akron integrated plan will be um, adopted by um, not only the EPA but also by the federal judge because that will transform our city. Think of an industry around green engineering. With biomimicry at the University of Akron and design, we can create a program for green engineering. When people are going like, well, what even is green infrastructure? Well, that's because we have not been training people to do it. Now, we can't. There are businesses out there that will go out of business if they can't have an opportunity to do business in relationship to this device uh, and sewer overflow. So it is extraordinary. This is the transformative catalytic event for the city of Akron when it comes to thinking about green and thinking about how nature deals with water and finding ways to uh, take costs out of the construction but actually bring benefits to the community. Uh, it is recognized that green streets and um, uh, green infrastructure is a safer community, a more walkable community, and for um, the house um, value, the streets and neighborhoods will be enhanced by green infrastructure. They will be devalued with the other. So we love green infrastructure, all the more green infrastructure. This is our future. We can do so much with it. Just as one other business that started in Akron, uh, Polyflow, does anyone know what Polyflow is? Yeah, so it's waste.